You're listening to www.integralnaked.org. What if I woke up one day and the people I loved were gone? Not just gone, but taken. In the most horrible way imaginable. That's what happened to countless people last week. At a campus in Virginia, a student started executing people, taking lives. It's hard not to recoil. Somewhere in the houses around us, there probably are dangerous people. Pushed us over and took in the boat. Superhumans were all eating waves. Everyone struggles and no one is saved. It makes me We are divine lights, but it shines through a spectrum. The light has different frequencies. When I started talking to people about what happened in Virginia, I heard colors. Uh, no, I wouldn't judge him. I think that... I just think that there's just so many circumstances in the world that there's oftentimes some sort of explanation, maybe rational, maybe a good explanation, you know, nobody knows, but... And I don't know enough about him, I don't know about anything about it to be able to place any judgment upon him. It's just, it's terrible, it's terrible. It must create these massive folds that then have to, are folded on top of other things, creases that can't be undone. Mm -hmm. It's just a terrible thing, you know. You can't actually kill a soul. But they were prevented. These were people that were prevented from living out their lives uh, and, and the, the purposes that they had in this world. So who knows what any one of those people could have done or contributed to the world other than just being in the newspaper, being a dead body. And I believe that God is sovereign and God is all loving, but just really having that understanding and helping others to understand maybe just the fact that how, just the fact that we have this free will and how God is all loving, but he allows these things to happen and he's, he's just torn apart by it. And I could kind of feel that just brokenness that God feels. I personally, I'm a pagan. For me, spirituality is a much more personal thing and I don't really judge or take what other people do and have that like relate to my spirituality unless it affects me. I'd say it's more of the uh, science side. People are born with less brain cells than others. Some people are born smart, some people are born stupid. So for me it's just a realization that some people are fucked up. I believe that we all live in our own universes and that just I'm very true in my beliefs and I'm very strong in them and I'm very very spiritual but just because I'm at least I just because I have my own beliefs doesn't mean I deny the fact that other people's theories or religions are true as well they might be true in their universe but in mine this is what's true I, I look more so at the I guess like the academic side of why it happened and what happened to explain it to me it's more easy to grasp a situation if you understand the you know like the upbringing and what can happen and what went wrong and rather than relying on me to explain it to me. There are many views of the Virginia Massacre. Psychologists describe psychotic breaks, personality disorders, psychiatrists target chemical imbalances, neural circuitry, sociologists delve culture and family. There's even research describing ties between weather conditions and murder rates. Some blame our gun laws, the most lenient in the first world. Each has part of the puzzle. Of, you know, the question of human evil. I don't think that evil um, exists as this big boogeyman that's plaguing humanity. I think that evil exists as a tendency inside ourselves, as a tendency to be uh, narcissistic. Look at the, 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 the number of people on this planet, the sheer number of people, and the pressures that this kind of civilization a mechanistic civilization imposes on on everyone a rigidity and so on well you're gonna statistically you're gonna get things happening but it doesn't it doesn't shock me it disgusts me it does not shock me like what's happening in our family structures how is it that we as a society especially as a capitalist society 
are totally contributing to the fact that our family bonds are corroding. I, I think maybe he had a really hard childhood. Maybe something very horrible happened to him. Anxiety over um, just how random life can be, whether it's positive or negative, you know. So just to have for it to be like a, uh, a tragic event like that, it just caught me with just a sense of like helplessness, you know. So I don't feel like it's so much the people he killed, it was more like he was trying to affect the families. Like, you see this pain you're feeling from this person you lost, this is what I'm feeling. Yeah. This is who I am. But when you take someone's life, you mess with the energy of the universe. You completely obliterate the point of their life and what their what their goals are in their life with through their human body. And it just it's karmically reactive with your next life. And in your next life, if you were a mass murderer in your next however many people you killed lives, that same amount, then you'll be killed in those lives. There are individual and social components, but some interpretations are better than others. For instance, the one from personal development guru, Steve Pavlina. Just hours after the Virginia massacre, Steve Pavlina posted the following on his website. Quote, Consider the recent shooting at Virginia Tech by a 19-year-old student. Events themselves are neutral and meaningless. A shooting has no meaning. And it certainly isn't tragic, since tragic is a subjective human label. I wouldn't say the Virginia Tech shootings were anybody's responsibility but my own. I manifested the whole thing. I don't see this event as tragic in any way. It doesn't cause me to feel outrage, a desire to see people punished, a sense of addiction to the drama. It just is. <sighs> Steve, your ego is part of the dream, not the source of it. Unless you're a three-year-old child, it's not appropriate to believe your thoughts create reality. It's magical thinking, and when it's extolled by an adult, it's clinical narcissism. The Holocaust, Rwanda, Columbine, meaningless only to a sociopath. You haven't transcended suffering. You've divorced yourself from it. We live inside of each other. When we love someone, our soul moves into them, and theirs into us. Love as much as you can love, as much as you can love, as much as you can love, and like fill in every, every, every cell of your body and your child's body of love. So hopefully if anything like that were to ever happen to one of us, that we could be as solid as we can be in love, you know what I mean? And just die in grounding of health and strength and love rather than, I mean, the perpetrator is obvious. I mean, it would, it would make most sense that he has some kind of attachment disorder. And just give as much love in the world because there's so much sadness in the world right now and fragmentation and pain. Um, and to, just, and this sounds so stupid, but to be fearless with your love and be fearless with yourself and how you approach the day, and how you approach each relationship. What do you do? You just love as much as you can when you can. Learning to trust myself, you can trust the world, like even when bad things happen. And all we can do is try to teach you to like yourself. Do you like yourself? Yeah. Yeah? I, I better do like myself. This body won't drop a plank I won't walk off look below where is the joy if you go too deep it's an endless void but my weight is too much to hold and my arms are ready to fold just beneath me is there